Good morning, good morning, and welcome to my channel. I am Deb Morris, your spirit poet. As usual, it is a pleasure to be here with you this morning, lifting up the name of Jesus, exalting our King. His word um, is life. His word is life. And if we would follow his word, now we hear that a lot. We hear that, you know, um, follow his word, do his word, listen to his word. What does that really mean? What does it mean to follow the word of God? What does it mean to, 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 to be a doer of the word? Uh, it's simple, but it's not that simple. Why? Because the things of God are foolishness to the flesh. Yeah? The flesh is always hostile. The flesh is always fighting against the things of God. And so there are even times when our flesh will tell us, that's not what you should do. Are you crazy? You can't walk that way. You can't follow that book. That's not what it means. That's not wisdom. That's not how you live your life. And that's the way that your flesh will react to the things of God. But let's go back. Let's go back a couple, a couple, um, centuries shall we um david it would have been absolutely ridiculous for a young boy to take on a goliath to take on a giant that was over nine feet tall the entire armies of israel at the time were running scared from this beast that was before them threatening to eat them and conquer them and this young boy he gets up and he goes you know what how dare you speak against my god like this that's boldness so the word gives you boldness encounters with god gives you boldness relationship and fellowship with god gives you boldness so that's the first thing boldness why don't we do the things that God have called, has called us to do? Why don't we speak the word with boldness, emphasizing the power and authority of God in our lives? We lack boldness. And that boldness will only come when we hear the word of God. See, the word of God is like medicine. It's like a serum. It goes into our spirits and it enlivens that which is ungenerated in our lives what is ungenerated and I use ungenerated not because I know the meaning but because it sounds like it's the opposite of regenerated yes um, so consider this we have within us the breath of God the power of God the authority that he has given us in this time and this season to do his work amen but how is it going to come forth if we don't stir it up and that's why Paul said to Timothy stir up stir it up right it's it settled at the bottom consider I'm a mom so when you mix like juice or something everything is settled at the bottom it's up to you to get in there and stir it up and even if it's at the bottom and you pour that juice out you're not tasting what's settled at the bottom right and when when, when, when you go in there and you pour that juice out all you're getting is what's on top. The whole of the sediment, the flavor is left on the bottom. And God is saying to us that you need to constantly go in there and stir it up. How do you stir it up? How? By speaking in tongues, by uh, prayer, by fasting, by meditating on the word of God, by keeping him at the forefront of our minds. It was Jeremiah. Uh, I had it right here. Do you realize how I always have this word right here? And then it goes. Uh, let me see if I can find it though. It's in Jeremiah. Jeremiah 15 verse 16. It says, your words were found. I ate them. Your words were to me a joy and the rejoicing of my heart. For I am called by your name, the Lord God of hosts. It is his word. It is his word that gets into us. It is his word that stirs us. It is word. Um, the scriptures also talk about 
faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. How do you hear the word? Well, you can listen to a sermon, can't you? You can play the word of God from your device using the Bible and just playing it. Or you can speak the word out of your mouth. I have found that one of the greatest ways to stir up the spirit on the inside is to speak the word. So you're washing them dishes, you're sweeping out the house, you're dealing with the baby, you're your, your, whatever it is you're doing and, and you speak the word speak the word, meditate on the word you're constantly, fear comes fear comes during the day, you're doing whatever it is you're doing and fear comes you know, I don't know about you but there are times when I might be you know, just at home, just chilling and there are issues that are happening in my life issues that are there, you know, underlying issues. You may be even concerned about them, but you're not really paying much attention. You're not, you're not placing much emphasis, but it's so, it's there. It's there and it's not going away. The issues are there. And so in, in, in your subconscious, you might be worried or concerned thinking about these things. And all of a sudden, wham, out of nowhere, this worry comes, this frustration comes, this, 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 this overwhelming um, anxiety might attack. I, I know a lot of people have this um, this this panic attacks and, 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 and stress attacks and, you know, anxiety just overtakes them. But in that moment, you stir up, you stir up. How? You start speaking the word. All the words that are inside of you, you begin to search them out. You begin to speak the word back into your circumstances. You begin to speak the word into the atmosphere of your house. You begin to speak the word as a, as a, as, 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 as um, communion between you and God. And when you begin to do that, you begin to stir up. You begin to stir up. You begin to stir up faith. You begin to stir up boldness. Let's go again to Abraham. Abraham. Abraham knew of God, but he decided, listen, I'm going to choose to follow God. So he gave him an instruction. He said, leave your father's and your mother's house. Well, he never said mother. Mothers weren't that. Um, <laughs> but he said, leave your father's house. Leave your father's house. Now that may have been crazy. Your inheritance is with your father's house. Everything that you know is with your father's house. But God gave him a promise. And upon that promise, upon the strength of that word, Abraham changed the course of his life. Changed the course of his life. Amen? It has to do, it's, you know, a lot of times, and, and this is something that irks me. Let me just explain you go to church and you sit there and you, you receive this awesome worship. You receive this awesome word and, and you're empowered by all that you've heard and you're empowered, yes? And then you step out of church and um, you probably have a little chat somewhere and you head into your car and you go home and that's it. You have, you have except for the little it bits that grabbed you, you don't visit that word anymore you don't water that word in prayer you don't you don't um you don't seek to 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 to, to, to um nourish that word you don't seek to hide that word in the pockets of your heart so what's gonna happen well i'll tell you what happens either the the happenstance of life the vicissitudes of life come in and choke that word to death or, or, or as the scriptures talk about the crows, they come in and they take away the word. Or the wind blows them away. It's up to us. The choice is ours. I choose to take that word, to hold that word fast, to bury that word so that that word can bring forth fruit. And it is our choice. That's what we need to understand. It is our choice. The choice is ours. The enemy cannot stop us from doing what the word of God tells us to do. We make a choice. We make a choice. So the choice is ours whether we're going to grow in the word. You can't blame anyone for you not growing in the word. The choice is yours if you're going to serve the Lord. You can't blame anyone for you not serving the Lord. Amen? And what is the best way? Getting into the word. Getting into the word. What did Jeremiah say? Jeremiah said, your words were found and I ate them. Your words 
were found and I ate them. And Psalms 19, Psalm 19 verse 17 says, the Lord's law is perfect. It restores the soul. The Lord's covenant is sure, making wise the simple. The word of the Lord written upon our hearts is the only way that a believer can live. If we want to live that abundant, victorious, undefeated, immovable life, then we cannot, ex we cannot uh, presume that we can do it without the word of God. And once you get into the word of God, let me tell you something, everything will burst wide open. You say, man, I can't pray. I can't pray for about five minutes before I start going to sleep. That used to be me. That used to be me. That's a blockage of the flesh. Get into the word. That's what you need to do. Get into the word and you'd be amazed how much you would be open. Oh, I can't worship. I don't know how to do that. I don't get into the word. Get into the word. I can't read the word every time I take up the word. I'm about get into the word. Yeah, you have to start somewhere. There's a point that you must begin. You must initiate the process when the, when the, um, when the prodigal son or the lost son was coming home, the, the father stood waiting for him to come. He had to take that first step. It was when the father saw him in the distance that the father took off running towards him. He never took off before he saw the son. See, there is, there is desire, but we must do something in order to initiate that which we desire. We can't just sit back on our laurels and expect that everything is just going to come. We, we sit and we listen to the message and we're all excited and yay, this is going to happen, that is going to happen. And we're very excited about that. And it is, it's written in stone. It is going to happen. But there is, there is, there is, there is, uh, uh, my friend always says, you must participate in your own deliverance. You must participate. There is a participatory role in our ascension, in our deliverance, in our walk, in our journey with God. You don't just come and sit down and say, all right, God, you deal with the rest of this. No, God expects us. He expects us to take, take up our role, take up our responsibility. I don't even know what I'm saying. I'm just ranting and raving. Um, but I hope you got something from this this morning. I hope you were empowered to take out that word. I hope you were empowered to begin living a word-centered life. I hope you were empowered and you were encouraged to, 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 to live out your life on the strength of the word. I saw something amazing in the past week. Uh, Pastor Odeyebe, I believe his name was. I'm not very good. But his, his, his son was he's a real general by the way military man in the army of god right and his son died unexpectedly his son was a pastor up and coming um, a good man of god the quiet dignity with which the entire family dealt with the situation made me stop and look he addressed, you know, it looked like a national address over there in Africa. And the, the strength on which he spoke and the, the quiet, you know, it made me sit up and straighten my back. It didn't matter what I was going through. It shouldn't. The word is my foundation and the word is unshakable. So if the word is unshakable, it doesn't matter if my whole world is falling apart. I am unshakable because my foundation, the foundation on which I stand, is immovable. And that just gave me great joy and great strength. It encouraged my heart. Because here was this man had lost his son. His wife had lost a, a son. His, his, his wife, the, the, the young man's wife, had lost her husband and their children's father. And the strength upon which they stood. I, I'd use Jesus' words. Never before had I seen such strength. The man spoke of things like, 
This is a seed that has died that shall bring forth. He, he, he was admonishing, not admonishing, but he was encouraging and challenging the people to whom he spoke. He said, do not allow him to die in vain. Instead of mourning his death, instead of mourning in, in, in years of grief, no, rise up and challenge yourself to ensure that thousands come to the Lord because of his death. The word the word, that is the only way that man could have garnered that much strength. We stub our toe and for a week we're out. Oh my God, my toe is so well. We experience difficulties and for months, even a year, we're out because, you know, we're dealing with this. God is calling strong people. God is calling us strong people people who will walk and live according to the strength of the word. May you be that person. May we be that people. Amen. Father, we just thank you for your word. We thank you for the strength of your word. We thank you for the challenge this morning. We thank you, Father, that we will eat your word, ingest your word, be nourished by your word, become your word. We would not only be hearers, but doers also. And upon the strength of that word, upon the foundation of that word, Almighty God, we would rise. We would ascend to, to the place that you have prepared for us as a people so that you might be glorified and the kingdom of heaven may be established in the earth. We give you praise, my King, and glory. We give you honor. In Jesus' name, amen. I am Deb Morris, your spirit poet. God bless you. Have a beautiful day.